Oh dear. Oh dear, disaster. Oh dear. Oh dear, disaster. Oh dear. Oh dear, they took all the mature leaves. At least there's a few leaves left. We've got some flowers and it's still making okra, but it only took them three days to get used to the string in the bags and the deer started jumping between the fence and the string. Yes, on any normal weekend, this would be a disaster, but not this weekend. We've got friends down in North Carolina. I haven't heard from them. I don't think they were in the affected area. I know we got friends of this channel that are in Florida that they've touched base. We'll hear from them here in just a little bit. Saturdays were based on you, celebrating what's going on in your garden. Yes, you lose some crops, that's a disaster. You lose your house, that's a bigger disaster. You lose a family member, that's devastating. I'm praying for those that were affected by this hurricane. I hope you say a prayer for them too. There are some good areas to donate. Be careful where you donate. You wanna make sure that relief gets to the people that need it. Seems like a really odd segue to get back into a gardening episode, but we can use this as a learning experience. And yeah, the deer did kind of devastate some of the crops. Looks like they came in here and knocked over some of our amaranth. Which is okay, because we're gonna harvest the flowers and they didn't seem to hurt them. They've been eating the leaves though. What they did to the okra plant. Well, we know what deer like. They like green bean leaves and okra leaves. So what do you think? Might keep the deer out? <laughs> That's eight foot tall. If they're jumping that, they can have the okra. I'm raising this fence all the way around the garden. It's over 350 running feet. Gonna have to change my compost system. I think we're gonna set that up in the back, which is the poorest soil of the garden. The way we had this set up, we put our kitchen scraps in that first bin, turn it into the second bin, and then turn it into the garden. But by putting this fence up, we're not gonna be able to dump the scrap bucket in here, but it's also gonna make it much harder for the groundhog who's been using this as a runway. <laughs> oh dear, they sure done a number on these green beans, but it doesn't look like they got into the main vine and having these lower leaves bitten off actually helps me out finding the beans. Took some of the leaves off of these green beans also. But I tried to find the silver lining in everything. Do you see it? Well, we're gonna get a loofah. It might be a little one, but we got a loofah flower. I'm gonna have to plant them a little earlier next year, but I'm sure hoping we get something. Patrice sent in some photos showing that she made it past the bugs and the heat and her fall garden has started to produce better than her summer garden ever did. She's got containers and she's ready to go into the winter. Patrice, those harvests look good and they're gonna get better. Thank you for sharing and we look forward to seeing what you grow this winter. Jane is new to this group. Look at this mulch drop she just got. I think you got a pretty good start on your deep mulch garden. Thank you for sharing, Jane, and welcome. <laughs> Well, we got a few little sweet potatoes in here. See what else we got. I'm just gonna pick this one corner because I can't help myself. And we'll go ahead, make sure we got this garden secure before we put out any more plants. The long range forecast says we might get a frost within the next two weeks, but then it looks like it's gonna be warm again. And right now, it's been 80 and 90 degrees. <laughs> I got a beat. <laughs> <laughs> See what we got down in here. I planted these a little later than everything else. So they didn't really have a whole lot of time to grow. There's some fingerlings here. These cook up really, really nice. We enjoy these. If you plant enough slips, even if critters are helping themselves to some of them, you are going to get something. And they went ahead and produced a few. Mike and Linda are still getting some wonderful summer peas. They've started to dry and ferment some peppers and their fall garden is well underway. Mike, Linda, we sure appreciate the motivation. Thank you for sharing. Hurricane Helene came in north of Brother Bruce. It's a good thing. He's just about to the point where the hardest work you're ever gonna do in a deep mulch food forest is harvest. And just look what he has to harvest. What a variety. Bruce, we're thankful you're able to take advantage of your weather 
and bring us what is potential in parts of the United States. This is just fantastic. Thank you for the continued inspiration and showing what a deep mulch food forest can do. And those dragon fruit, oh my gosh. I bet they're tasty. We got a bunch more reapers that are ready to come in. Now if you ask Walter, he'll tell you the challenges of the white flies really were no big deal. He got a lot of produce. His Tabasco peppers are coming on wonderful. He's got fall garden in, and he's just planted some winter crops. Walter, this is going to be your second full year going. Keep this going all winter long. We look forward to seeing what you produce in that small deep mulch garden. Thank you for your motivation. Today is Saturday. You know what that means. We go to you and celebrate what's going on in your garden. We've taken a look at some of the friends of this channel and the photos they've sent in, the inspiration they've given us, ideas, motivation. The reason I'm doing the garden way I'm doing it is I wanted to show everybody that you don't have to spend a ton of money and you can just use what's around. I keep getting contacted by outfits that want me to hawk their stuff. There's one in particular who's got some beautiful raised beds and if you got a bankroll and want to have a garden, that's, that's a wonderful thing. But I just wanted to be able to come out and garden without a whole lot of expense. You've seen my progression over the last few years. We started with no fence. Then we had to add a little bit of a fence. Then we got the armadillo, so we added the electric fence. Now we got the deer that have finally found our garden, so I'm taking the fence all the way up. And what does this have anything to do with anything? Well, with that hurricane that just came by, you can be as prepared as you are if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Everything you have can be just completely washed away. And that's kind of what this garden is about. And that's what Saturday is about, us sharing knowledge. By knowing how to do this, knowing how to grow your own food, it can all be washed away and we can start again and still grow our own food. You can do this too. And I invite you to become a member of this group. There's no obligation. You just send in a photo now and again, let us celebrate what's going on in your garden. I guarantee all of the gardeners would love to see what's going on in your garden. And this is where we get ideas. This is where we get inspiration. This is where we get motivation. You can help. Well, unfortunately, the deer kind of got this little okra. It's got a couple little leaves. I don't know if we're gonna get anything else off of that. And just by having a little screen to keep the critters out, the radishes are doing great. The spinach are coming on just fine. Looks like we got some free cilantro in there. The beets are doing great. Got a bunch of lettuce over there. We're gonna be able to start harvesting some lettuce leaves here directly. Well, there's nothing like eating fresh out of the garden. Wait, that's a reaper. Yeah, it's a bit warm and it grows. It's a little more than a bit warm. But I've been cooking with these. I'm not brave enough to pop the whole thing in my mouth. This is not bad. This is actually a wonderful little plant. I suggest you grow some and see what your tolerance is. But I also had an okra that I could eat along with it. Mmm. Now that first swallow, when it hits the back of your throat, you're going to know you have a hot pepper. You can do this too, and I'm not talking about, woo, that reaper will give you hiccups. You can do this too, and I'm not talking about getting the hiccups from the hot reaper. I'm talking about growing a garden, producing your own food. And until next time, remember, take care of yourself, take care of your family, and God bless you. Yes, the Carolina Reaper is a little warm. Come on, let's plant. Let's go plant garden.